Welcome, everybody, to another exciting episode of Logic Live. This is actually episode 21, uh, Building and Running Your Flame Business at Home with Randy McEntee. So we, uh, we now have all identified the first edit that I'm going to make uh, before putting this up on, uh, on YouTube. Logic Live is brought to you, as always, by our friends at Synesis Oceana. Synesis is, is my own personal reseller. I've had a great relationship with those guys for 15 years, and we could not run our business without them, especially now when we're all working remotely. Um, they have always supported the, the Logic community, sponsored uh, One Frame of White, sponsored user groups all over the country, uh, and I can't thank them enough for their support of the Flame community. Solutions integration and support for digital content creators. Find out all about their remote workflow solutions at Synesis.io. Synesis Oceana, supporting Flame artists since 1997. So today's guest is the lovely and talented Randy McEntee. Randy started his flame career at Filmworkers in Chicago. He then moved to New York, where he spent seven years with The Mill, where he worked his way up to VFX supervisor. Then it was back to Chicago, where he spent seven years as head of 2D at The Mill's Chicago office. And this past February, Randy open, opened up his own business, the Department of External Services. He's one of the most active contributors on Logic and an all-around awesome guy. So let's please give a warm Logic Live welcome to the lovely and talented Randy McIntyre. There he is. Hold on, let me stop my share here. There we go. Hey, man. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. How are you guys doing? Uh, we're, I'm doing great. Yeah. Uh, we're, uh, I'm broadcasting here in the Logic Live studio, which is our guest room, and I see that you are in, uh, in the Department of External Services. Incorrect. Um, Incorrect. Yeah. This is my daughter's room. <laughs> <laughs> Coronavirus does weird things to your home, so uh, yeah, I'm running cables. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I have them too. Oh, they're, yeah. They're running along, along this oh, way. Yeah. Back. Power. If, yes, um, if, my, if the cat comes in... Um, which is always a possibility here uh, on Logic Live. You'll, you'll be able to see the, uh, the gaffer's tape that's been holding down the ethernet cables that run to my living room, which you know, I told my wife was just temporary because we're only <laughs> gonna be home for two weeks, you know. Me too, me too. I'm in the doghouse just like you are, so don't worry. Oh, wonderful. Well, it's nice to have company. Um, you know, uh, I, I wanted to uh, share this picture with everybody in case in case it wasn't seen on Facebook. <gasps> Is that, uh, but this, the, the, yes, yes, right. Yes. So two years ago, I believe it was two years ago, Randy yeah. uh, rode his bike from Chicago to New York as part of a fundraiser for the Leukemia uh, and Lymphoma Society, if I remember correctly. Correct. Um, and you made a stop in Peekskill, New York, which is like five minutes that way. <laughs> and so I went down there and, you know, went to the Peekskill Brewery where you and, and your fellow compositing uh uh, you know, cyclists were yeah. having a beer and a, and a, and a burger and, um, and we got to meet up and, it, and he is that tall. Uh, Look at those person. pre COVID not, bodies. I know. Right. <laughs> you know, what's funny is I don't know about, I mean, I'm, I, well, that's, I was going to maybe share too much, but you know, <laughs> I, my, I've, I've now gone back to my, my, my COVID body is now I'm, I've gone back to what I was before. Anyway, yep. too much sharing. Um, but uh, it was always great to see you, and uh, and I know you told me you told me that uh, almost as much as you wanted to complete this amazing ride for charity, you wanted a picture with the Andy Milka smile. So true, uh, truth. I was happy, I did say that. happy to make that come true. <laughs> Word, awesome. man. So uh, you know, one, one thing that I think is really fascinating before we dive right in here is, uh, you know, I think this is it, it's so germane is um, we're here to talk about building your flame business at home, yeah, uh, and that's something that you did. You know, you you. Oh, uh, started your business in February. And uh, I don't know if anybody else uh, has been up on current events, but uh, that kind of coincided with a, with a thing, Yeah, you know? And so uh, I kind of wanted to really maybe ask you about that. And maybe it's just something that'll come up in the course of our conversation mm. here of, you know, yeah, uh, about what it was like to start your business just yeah. as everyone else was stopping their business. Sure. Um, remember Airplane, the original one? Yes. Uh, it feels... <laughs> <laughs> don't call me Shirley <laughs> exactly uh it, it feels like every week um I say something to my wife about a, a, it's a pick the heck of a time to stop, stop sniffing glue um <laughs> or you know various vices um it is been interesting um I wouldn't have it any other way um you know I yeah I, I I'm, I'm I'm happy I'm still happy with it even though it's uh you know, you have to act like a swan where you're, uh, you know, up here, you're nice and chill, but beneath the camera. Yeah. You're, you're just trying to stay afloat. 
Try to stay afloat. Flying. Exactly. Right? But, it's, but, you know, I think you make a really valid point in that, you know, part of the challenge that you have to give yourself when you go out mm-hmm. on your own, when you start your own business is to be nimble, is to mm-hmm. adapt, is to kind of push yourself and not get complacent. And, oh yeah, you know, talk about jumping, you know, jumping mm-hmm. in with both feet, man. So congratulations. Well, <clears throat> we'll see how it goes. That's it's right. never too late to screw it up, Andy. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> uh, we must, we must have gone to the same, well, you, you graduated with a major in philosophy, right? Was that one of the things that you learned? Yeah, but it was a BS. Oh, yes. Oh, I have a BS in many things. <laughs> All right, man. Let's get underway. So last week, okay. Renee took us through like uh, some yeah. of the business side, which was wonderful. Yeah. And, uh, and you're going to take us a little bit through the tech side. So why don't you go ahead and share your screen and, and, uh, and take us through it. Let's get going. All right, let's do that. Um, yeah, so last week, Renee really set the, set the tone for us. We've got a, we've got a lot to get through um, to make sure that we, uh, we, we make her proud. Um, again, big thanks, to Renee, for last week for getting this ball, uh, this conversation going. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our goal um, in partnering for this series was, was twofold. It was first to share timely and relevant information uh, and aspects of our experience to, uh, to inspire a new wave of artists to come forward and to share yours. Um, and um, you know that's 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 a big important thing. I think our community is is filled with 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 amazingly rich and talented artists, and um, and hopefully this presentation serves you know me along with that other end of that spectrum uh, that people are just kind of getting your 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 feet wet. Um, so yeah, so um, so yeah, let's dive in, shall we? Let's do it. All right, cool. And I'm going to motor through a bunch of stuff, and if anyone wants to uh, to pause and linger. Uh, let me know. And I'm going to try and keep an eye on the chat screen and the Q&A, but I could use some help doing that. So if you see... Oh, I got you covered. Don't worry. Okay. Okay, cool. So yeah, just uh, just barge on in. Um, all right. So this presentation was developed to provide a, a process or a framework um, for those of you looking to build a flame at home for the first time. Um, so again, there's a ton of stuff, but I'm going to motor through it. Stop me if you uh, have any questions. And uh, we'll definitely reserve some time at the end for, uh, for some Q&As. Um, again, my name is Randy McEntee. I'm a Chicago-based visual effects supervisor and flame artist. Like Andy said, six months ago, I started uh, a new adventure. Um, I call it New Adventures with Old Friends, aka the Department of External Services. Um, I spent 13 years at the mill in New York and Chicago. Um, I'm totally into horizontal reels. I'm totally into smoke hotkeys. <laughs> I just want to get that out now. So if anyone doesn't trust me, you guys can bail now and send <laughs> love mail and hate mail to uh, me at the uh, at Randy at the Department of External Services.com. Um, nice. I'm also going to warn you in advance, there, there will be far too many food and cooking related analogies. Um, that's just how I roll. So, uh, so bring it. Um, and then also too, like we just started with a bit of a, a bit of a preamble and understanding of where we are in this world. And I think you know, the first 20 or so episodes of Logic Live have been amazing to step into and really get into the heart of, of, of being an artist. Um, and so today we're going to understand a little bit about what's happening contextually and, and, um, and just be concerned and uh, cautious and cognizant of and conscious of uh, <laughs> what an absolute dumpster fire it is to be uh, in our business right now. Um, so yeah, so this is all very topical. It might not necessarily be timely, um, but hopefully it's helpful for you. Um, right now. Um, so we all got problems. And um, I just want to remind everyone that the gear that you choose to solve those problems, it's, um, it's a necessary piece of that puzzle, but it's just a piece and a small one at that. Um, so yeah, so if, you're, if your tech was, uh, was on this graph, oh, there it is. It's just this little like dangling bit at the back. <laughs> so, um, you know, yes, this is a chat about tech, but it's also a chat about tech within the context of what's going on today. Um, and don't forget to keep a little perspective. You know, what form factor you choose and how many clock cycles your CPU has is just a minute percentage of your overall offering as a business. It's, um, it's just a garnish or, uh, or an embellishment on the icing of your cake. It is absolutely not your cake, okay? Um, but don't forget, it's also normal and human nature to compare yourself to others um, and tech is perhaps the only objective way we can do that. Um, so we end up just flooding ourselves with benchmarks and, uh, and perform various acts of technical self-flagellation 
Um, so just be kind to yourself and keep some perspective. Um, so the big four when it comes to your business, and I promise this isn't anything more than a little perspective, um, sales, production, operations, creative, find all the work, choose the best projects, service the project beautifully, and make beautiful pictures. Uh, so Andy, where would, uh, where would tech be on this graph and this pie chart if you could, if you could find it? Uh, exactly. Yeah, uh, they're, exactly. They're, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think the, the fastest computer uh, in the world is sitting idle if you don't have any work to do on it. So that's right. Um, so it's not that I'm not going to give you all the answers, but I'm going to give you some questions to figure out and some, some processes to go forward. So don't worry, I'm not going to skirt the issue. I just want to make sure that you have the right mindset. Um, <clears throat> and then last, before we jump in, is just make sure that you really understand your priorities as a business. You know, the capability capacities and the, the profitability and the quality are, are um, they don't work in a vacuum. And so just have an understanding, have a little bit of self-awareness to go through this process. Um, and if your business was a camera, make sure you've got the right stuff in your frame, keep the right stuff in focus and, um, and let that kind of be, um, I don't know, the filtration of, uh, of your choices, if that makes any sense at all. Totally. Um, Dude, I love this. This is like the 12 dimensional Venn diagram upgrade to that production triangle that everyone quotes about like fast, cheap, or, <laughs> you know, or good, yeah. you know, uh, it's, this is just also relevant. So absolutely relevant. Yeah. And cool. thanks, for, thanks for doing this to help frame the conversation we're going to have about tech. Oh, yeah, sure thing. Um, so obviously, if you, if you decide you want to jump in, <laughs> you got to be honest with yourself. You got to do some preparation. Um, and don't look like this guy. Now listen here, Jiminy. Uh, yeah. He, was, uh, he, was, he did not find his own truth. Um, <laughs> so you got to start with kind of asking uh, what kind of, of business or what kind of artist you see yourself as, right? Or where can you find value? Where can you provide value, I should say? Are you working in a classic French kitchen with, you know, all the classic bougie French words um, and all the different stations broken down? Or are you going to be like Stephanie Izzard style, like rocking the Iron Chef, doing her own thing? Maybe she's got a hired hand or two and she's got a client right over her shoulder just like, what are you doing in there? Um, so you don't have to choose one, right? But it's just being, again, a little bit self-aware so that you can, you can make good choices when it comes to shelling out cash or, or investing time and energy into technology. And then what kind of work is kind of up your alley, right? Are you into fine dining with tweezers? Are you like a give me a ladle and a scoop of mash and I'll just get these people fed kind of world? And both are valid. Neither of them is wrong, but you do need to understand where you are as an artist and, and where you can really you know, put food on the table. Um, and then you have all different kinds of ways of earning money as, a, as an artist. You can be an artist where you work on other people's machines. You can be an artist with your own box, which is what we're talking about. And you can be your own artist with a box with a company and serve a variety of, of, of clients, right? So like six months ago, I had numbers to try and figure out where I was gonna, you know, how much of my revenue would be from this guy and this kind of company. And since coronavirus, you know, I've had less than five working days on somebody else's computer. Um, and so that's, you know, fortuitous timing, lucky timing, but it's opened up an entirely new level or a, a revenue stream that I'd never have access to um, instead of just flying somewhere and using somebody else's boxes and electrons. Um, obviously that comes with uh, a variety of, of revenue and it comes with a varying variety of risk. Um, so that's something that I just want to kind of frame so that you can understand where you want to be in, in your world. And then just like Renee talked about last week, I warmed up my network and I talked to everybody I knew. I talked to engineers, I talked to resellers, I talked to agency clients, directors, flame artists, a lot of people that are, uh, that are watching this video. And Andy, guess what they all said? I said, what WTF? They said, what the heck is going on? We have no idea what's going on. Everyone said different things. And so right then and there, I decided that I was gonna be an expert generalist, that I wasn't gonna focus on a specific thing, that I needed a variety of capabilities and capacities so that I could just offer myself as, an, as the new guy on the block. You know, like if, if Renee last week looked calm and chill and she had everything figured out, it's because she's, cause she, cause, cause she, she has figured it out. Um, and I'm kind of very publicly understanding what all this means kind of in real time through a pandemic, which is, um, Interesting. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing to, to recognize and to publicly say, um, because a lot of people are, are, are forced into this. Um, 
either already or possibly soon. Um, so yeah. Um, and then when I kept on talking with my network, there was another common theme. Everyone was like, <laughs> you know, everyone's like, it's just deliverables, right? Like it's just nutso out there. It used to be a tape in a, in a FedEx box. Now it's everything, but, um, so yeah, so that was a common theme. Um, okay. So I talked to my network. I talked to those people out there in the world. Now you got a decision to make, right? You've got Linux or Apple. Um, and it's so such a common thing. Like every week there's a thread somewhere on logic that tries to say that something is killing something flame nuke, whatever it is, new here. Is mm -hmm. that going to kill flame? Um, and it's just in our kind of human nature to, 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 to take sides. Um, we do it in a culture. We do it with uh, ridiculous Chicago pastimes and food. Um, we do it within our business with nuke and flame battling each other out all the time. We do it within our application and we uh, secretly hate on the people that use the other kind of reels that we do. Um, so yeah, so here's some, some kind of choices that just some questions you can ask to figure out what might be helpful for you. So honestly, start with reading the manual. Uh, I know this is ridiculous. Just go through this, the flame system requirements and have a look and just become familiar with what some of these things are. So Autodesk puts these out there because they, well, they're a publicly traded company. They wouldn't guarantee, but if they could guarantee, they would say, look, you would have a good experience if your system looked like this. And they do that for HP, they do it for Dells, and they do it for a lot of Mac platforms. The latest Mac Pro 2020, AKA the 7 comma one, they do it with the old Mac, iMac Pro, sorry, not the old iMac Pro, the iMac the Pro, iMac Pro, the iMac Pro. Um, they do it with the Mac Pro 16 inch. Um, and they even do it with a seven year old Mac Pro from 2013 that still fetches, you know, a couple grand used. Um, there's also others out there that are not specifically Flame or Autodesk certified, self-certified by Lenovo, Box, those are absolutely valid and they're worth looking at because there are, like I checked this morning and Lenovo has got massive deals going on. So just know that some of these should be on your radar um, instead of just the uh, HP whatever versus the Mac whatever. Does that make sense? Good. Totally, great advice. Yeah, again, these are, these are recommended systems. They've been either, if not, they've been validated, you know, they've been tested, yeah. they've been checked yeah. out. Um, but, uh, there yeah. is so much stuff out there and, and, you know, and, and, and not necessarily like going the, the Hackintosh route. I mean, there's mm. still like legitimate, uh, you know, systems you can buy from a legitimate vendor or reseller sure. that have support and all kinds of stuff, but for you know, sure. they deviate from the, uh, from these recommends, but this is the perfect totally. place to start. Yeah. Just get, uh, just kind of just get, because six months ago, I, the only laptop, the only computers I ever bought in the last 10 years were laptops. Um, I had huge facilities with engineers who would take care of all that. So this just helped me understand what the heck I, I needed to care about. Um, so just if, if you think Linux is up your alley, here's some, some kind of the questions to ask yourself. Um, you know, if you live in a major market and you PC OIP a lot, and that's not a, a, a bad word, that's remote control other, com other computers versus RGS or TDG or any kind of remote control port uh, protocol. Like Andy, you're doing that from home, right? Yep. Yeah, I have yeah. a, a TDG here. Yeah. Um, and if you, if you expect to do that, like I thought I would do that a lot because I, I'm, you know, I could figure that out, but it's been zero days so far this, uh, this year for me of remote controlling someone else's computer. But if you do that, like I know there's people on this group and that's what they do. Linux could be good for you for various technical reasons, like pen pressure sensitivity and other kind of nonsense. Um, if you know what a DKU is and how to install one, Linux could be good for you. If you know precisely who your clients are and they're Linux based, could be good for you. Um, basic networking, because you're going to need a second machine, um, could be good for you. Uh, second base machine, sorry. Um, and if you value, value capacity more than capability, like if you need to squeeze out 10 more renders in a day versus being able to do these other things your client might ask for, Linux could be good for you. Um, do you have space for more than one machine? Linux could be good for you. And if you want maximum performance, again, Linux could be good for you. Um, on the Mac side, if you live in a minor market, maybe you're remote, like I am in Chicago, which is you know a big market, but still not as big as the as the coasts or or overseas in um, in London or or in Oz. Um, Mac could be good for you. Uh, capability is more important. Mac could be good for you. Only one machine to rule them all. Do you expect to travel? 
and Matt could be a good option for you. Um, so this is kind of where I ended up having to make a decision that I felt for me in my minor market, kind of what I was after, expert generalist, I was thinking Mac would be the good, would be the way for me to go. And I'm like, oh shoot, how am I gonna afford this, right? <laughs> Cause you look on the website and you spec out the pimped out Mac, whatever, and you're just like, oh my God. Um, but I started digging and real quick, I found Apple business accounts. So if you search for Apple store business, they'll take you to a new web page. And if you can create and prove with federal documentation in the US that you have, that you are an LLC, then you can link your Apple ID to an Apple business account. And as soon as you start adding stuff to a cart and choose your shipping, boom, they start taking, giving you discounts in your cart between three and 8% savings, which is definitely something to write home about, right? Like that's, that's, that's important. Um, also too, when you do that, you unlock the potential for, and this is the USA, right? Uh, for lease options. So I don't have amazing credit, I got good credit. I was authorized off the, right off the bat to spend 15 grand at you know, a normal kind of market rate, which paid back over three years, puts me about $500 a month out of pocket. So three years, 500 bucks a month, you do all that, you add up all the math, and a total out of pocket for just under 17 grand, I could spend 15 grand on a Mac store and be up and running within seven business days. Um, so look into that. It's a great way of, of getting some, some, uh, some billable kind of tech, um, but not shelling out a ton of cash, which just doesn't necessarily make sense for anyone right now. And then for the love of God, you look for used stuff, right? Like there's tons of iMac Pros, there's tons of stuff that's used out there on the secondhand market and refurbished. So this morning, and I'm gonna switch screens here. This morning I was looking for at the refurbished page and um, just this morning, here's eight core Mac Pros, 5,400 bucks. Oh, it says it's out of stock now. Oh, you're making me a liar. Here's another one, <laughs> doing it live. Oh, it's making, oh, see, look, everyone's already going online to buy it. But if you look at some of these, they come in real cheap. Oh, it's changing real time. This was different an hour ago. Anyway, what is fascinating, oh, these are all making a liar out of me. Okay, I'm a liar. Oh, you're not a liar. They just update. It's a, it's a, it's a moment in time, man. It's a moment you in know? time. Anyway, what's really great about these is that most of these devices are available to be shipped same day. They can end up on your doorstep tomorrow, uh, doorstep tomorrow, which is, um, which is worth knowing. Yep. I have uh, I mean, I have a new Mac here, uh, but this is the first one uh, that I bought that was not a refurb. Every other computer I've ever bought from Apple, I've yeah. got through the refurb store. Yeah. Totally worth looking at. And look, if it yep. gets refurbed and it's got some stuff in it that you don't want, maybe it's got um, uh, an afterburner card. Mm -hmm. Sell it, right? Like everyone wants to pay, to buy an Apple uh, an afterburner card, uh, afterburner card from Apple. Um, they don't want to pay two grand, but they'll pay seventeen fifty for it. So definitely worth looking at. Hey, maybe it's got a set of really expensive wheels. <laughs> oh, what time is it? 127, uh, 227, 127, not too bad, yeah. 227, not too 27 bad. minutes in. Yes. Not too bad. Not too bad. Yep. Uh, I bought Thank the you. rack mount so you guys can, uh, you guys can buzz off. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I absolutely do regret it. We'll get to that later. Um, and then also to look at CapEx phases or build phases of your purchase over time. You don't need to buy a 16, 24, 20. You don't need, you don't need to, you don't need to max stuff out. So here's a, a little example of um, kind of some stages that I had set out uh, as far as like the things I needed on day one. Um, so phase one was just me as an artist, right? Like business, all the stuff Renee talked about. Um, that's what I needed. And then phase two is if I needed a box, these are my extra level of expenses. And then um, if I want to do a whole job as a company, again, more expenses. And <laughs> obviously I did this before lockdown because uh, I, the phase four says artist with a box with a company with an office. Yeah. So, you know, no, I'm still using my, my Aldi table instead of my, uh, my $2,000 budgeted desk <laughs> chair. Anyway, there's still time. Still hope. Um, oh yes. A guy then, can dream, can he? That's the whole reason we're here, Andy. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So just think about it this way, right? 
and uh, and if this is helpful for you, make sure you're you're purchasing a machine that allows you to upgrade over time. Um, I'm I'm going fast. Randy, I, this... I think that's oh that's no I, I, you're going fast. I think that's really really great. Uh, I also just want to encourage anybody if you do have any questions, please uh, put them in the Q and A. But uh, uh, it's so important to to do a roadmap for yourself, like you put there, because yeah. all this stuff is so daunting, and we all know so many people or so many companies that overspent yeah. at the beginning and then just collapsed under the weight of that payment. And you, you're right, this is all modular stuff. Yeah. You know, even in an eight core, like even a it's still better than the computer you didn't have. You know, it's still 100% faster than the no computer that you currently didn't have. You know what it's I mean? True, very true. Uh, retribution. This was this was a screen grab from last night. Uh, anyway, so yeah, um, look at refurbished, um, and then here's just a couple examples of old trash cans. Look, they're still fetching a lot of money, which is both good wow. and bad. It's it's expensive to purchase, but they also hold on to their value quite well. Um, so here's like an OWC, uh, an Illinois based company, maxsales.com is their website. Um, so again, you can still find ways to get in and have a good experience if you have nothing, or if you just need something to start your business with. Um, so one thing I want to show you too, is just start measuring stuff. Um, if you have a laptop right now, if you have um, if, if you don't have anything or, or if you're on a machine, start measuring. And let me show you what I mean. Um, one of my favorite tools ever is, um, is iStat Pro. So um, up here, iStat Pro lives in, in my, these little windows up here. Let me get rid of this stuff. And um, so for example, it has, uh, it, it keeps snapshots of what you and your, your computers are doing over the last one to 24 hours or seven days. So whether it be internet speeds or CPUs going or GPU usage, like one of my biggest things is you don't need, like if you're like if budget isn't infinite, which it never is, then you necessarily might not need to max out a laptop, mm -hmm. right? It'd be nice if you oh, could. Oh, 100%. Right? But- 100%. So I've gone through and like for the first six weeks, I worked on the default 32 gigs of RAM. And I used my little RAM tool here to figure out what my usage was. And I've got 120 gigs of RAM right now. And for the last, you know, on and off, obviously there's a gap here when I was traveling for a shoot, but I've never used more than whatever this is, 60% of 128 gigs of RAM. So for the love of God, don't shell out anything that you don't need to unless you've like have measured, sorry, um, and kind of developed a science or at least some kind of need for it. So you're 100% right. I keep uh, iStat Pro running all the time. When I got this new MacBook Pro here, I maxed it out at 64 gigs. I was coming from a 16 gig machine, mm. which was constantly swapping, especially yeah. running Flame. Yeah. And there, there's no upgrade capabilities with things. So I, I, I bought it maxed out and yeah. I haven't gone, I think maybe the highest I've gone is 34 gigs of RAM, even yeah. on doing like a big, big flame project. So I, yeah. I guess I clearly could have gotten away with less, but, but again, the, um, I didn't know. And you know, the machine yeah. isn't upgradable, but you make such a salient point. Like I remember pricing out a Mac pro and going like, Oh, you know, whether I get my RAM from, uh, OWC or I get mm. it from Apple or whatever, it's like, but the Autodesk spec says I should be getting this much memory, you know, yeah. and it's, you know, yeah, it's Autodesk. They probably had RAM laying around from their, certified HP build, like, would it improve your experience? Sure. Is it necessary to get your company going if you need to put milk or oat milk or, yeah, because oat milk's good, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely, oat milk's good. yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's less, less wasteful than almond milk. Um, sure. So, so a big part of, a, of a, a big part of affordability is whether you need to spend the money or not. Mm -hmm, totally. So, uh, okay, so let's say you do want to go with the new option. Form factors are obviously a big choice for the Apple side. Uh, whether it go laptops or iMac or iMac Pro. The new iMacs were released a couple days ago, which are interesting. Don't know much about them yet. So if you ask, I'll, I'll, I'll have to punt. Um, and the Mac Pros are, are, are worth options as well. And look, like there's none of these are wrong. Like they're all certified by Autodesk to give a good performance. Um, mm -hmm. But you have to figure out like, do you need portability? Do you just need like two or three or four grand to get in? Because you can hide it somewhere on a credit card or I don't know, pay cash for it. Um, and on the other end, uh, the Mac Pro, it's, it's customizable forever. You can crack it open without any tools. You can clean it and it's got good scalable performance. 
Um, and that's ultimately why I decided on the Mac Pro because <laughs> hey -oh. this is not mine. Um, I've got three kids and a dog in an old house in the suburbs and just dust is just everywhere. And I knew that I needed something I could just crack open once a year and just take it outside and blow the dust off it. Um, especially when I was going to be banging on it all day, every day. And that was going to be my single income, three kids, spouse, dog, mortgage, health insurance, all that stuff. So that's, uh, that's oat milk is the reason I went into it. So here is what I ended up buying. This is not everything I bought on day one. This is accumulation of, of day one plus scraping together other things, which we will get into in three seconds. Um, but I just figured uh, 34 minutes in, you'd want to see <laughs> at least a list of what someone bought. Um, so you can do that, uh, that comparison thing. Um, but let's get into some of the, why I made some of these choices. You know, Randy, real quick, before you yeah. jump into that, uh, I just wanted to point out a couple things that were in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. One, uh, Suzanne Sharping pointed out that uh, B&H offers a, a credit card with a horrible name. It's the PayBoo card, yeah. uh, P-A-Y-B-O-O. -O. But uh, it, if you buy something with the PayBoo card, uh, they you get the tax back. So it's essentially, it's like buying something without tax. That's a yeah. good thing to know. Tim Farrell mentioned that there are small business loans available for very low interest. <clears throat> yes. Excuse me. Very low interest. Um, definitely check with your accountant uh, depending yes. on where you are. You know, the rules might be, might be different. Yes. Those are great things to know. But, but right now you can still get a $20,000 low interest loan from the Small Business Association. Um, and that's enough to get anything going. So yep. again, there's options. This is not, I don't have the answers for you. These are things that you should be aware of in case this is helpful. Um, and one, just sorry, just one last thing. Oh, yeah. I'm going to uh, at the end of this, or later in the in the conversation, and definitely when I post the the video up, Randy has uh, created a Google Sheet with links to all of the mm. equipment and uh, and options and and things like that that he's showing off today. So if anybody wants to follow up with that, yeah. uh, that will be available. So thank you, Randy, for putting that together. Yeah, sure thing. Um, processors, right? So Autodesk for Flame recommends twelve or sixteen. But look, guys, if a seven-year-old trash can is going to work, an eight-core is going to be fine, right? Um, it may not be what you want eventually. It may not be what you need eventually, but it, it, it will work. Um, and everything in this computer is upgradable, right? Like you can put any Intel Xeon W-series processor in this Mac Pro and use uh, within six screws of, of stuff and some thermal paste. Um, and there's videos out there of people doing it. So you don't need to spend a ton of cash uh, if you don't have have to or don't want it in the first place. Um, I wanted 16 cores because I knew that I needed other things like encoding and compression and all that other stuff. So for me, more cores are better than clock speed. Um, and using iStat Pro, which I'm not affiliated with, um, measuring stuff, like I keep it on and I just run different flame processes and see a lot of stuff still uses CPU. So, you know, you just need to do some homework if you can uh, to figure out what tools you use the most. And But 12 or 16 cores, is going to be fine, right? Like you're just not going to choose. You can't make a bad choice. It might be a better choice in 5% or 3% of instances, but that's about, uh, that's about it for those. Um, it's great to know the option is there totally. Oh, for sure. Um, memory for love of God, always by the minimum. Okay. Never. And, and Apple is not the only one that does this. Apple, Dell, HP, all those websites. If you go to their part selector and configurators and you put in 120 gigs of RAM, they're going to charge a minimum two, three grand for it. When in reality, you go to maxsales.com and you can get 128 gigs of RAM for under 800 bucks. So Apple business account, you save, you know, you spend a few grand, you save that money instantly pays for your RAM. So uh, that's a huge thing. And that's a common thread, but I'm sure there's someone out there that's, that's, that's looking at maxing out their RAM uh, from Apple and it, please don't. Please don't. Um, please graphics, don't. please don't. Um, graphics cards, um, this is a tricky one. Graphics cards are always tricky, right? Especially on the Mac side, they're underperformers comparative to their Linux counterparts. Um, I just buy as much as you can afford, right? And again, these are upgradable too, like the MPX modules, um, which are these little, these cases that slide directly into um, double length, double side, uh, double width PCIe slots in the Mac Pro. There's no cable connections. You just slide the rascal in and it's super easy. So, um, you know, buy, buy small if you want to or start with an eight or 16 gig card and then upgrade over time. Set aside 10, 12% on each billable project to eventually upgrade yourself if you need to after you've measured yourself on iStat Pro maxing out your GPU RAM. <laughs> yep. 
Um, and then storage. I have a little bit of a, of a controversial perspective when it comes to onboard storage. I like to buy just a little bit more than the minimum because on day one, if I'm ordering a bunch of stuff, it shows up and I can bill on it on day one, right? I can put my frame store on the, on the drive. It's NVMe, it's fast, it's three, 4,000 megabits a second and it'll serve you well. So as a backup, if my clients ever need disk encryption, any nonsense like that, I know that I've got four, a few terabytes ready to go for frame store space, no matter what. And it's cool and, and it's you, quiet. Did you partition that at all? Or do you just keep it as the four terabyte volume and then just- Yeah, I just kept it at four. It. I'm not smart enough yet to, to know the difference. Um, but look, you can also dual triple boot these rascals and you know, you can set aside a terabyte for a Linux, a Mac and a Windows uh, partition. So those are all eventual interesting things to, to look at. And let's just knock out some storage types, right? So you need a small system disk that's fast, right? Those for your applications is reduce your boot times. That makes your, your OS feel good, feel fast and quick and snappy. Um, you also need a frame store, right? So you need something that's medium sized um, and as fast as you can afford. So for me, that's two to kind of two terabytes and up for like frame store. Like if you're doing shot based or, um, or like ProRes stuff, two terabytes will be more than enough. But if you're doing 16 bit EXRs and holding lots of shows and conforms and versions and deliverables with every size rectangle, you're gonna kind of want it like three, four, five, six, seven, eight terabytes, something like that. And then disaster recovery, something big and slow, and then archiving something also big and slow. And you're gonna need two or three of them that are local, that are within your, your premise, uh, AKA your house or your daughter's bedroom, um, <laughs> and, uh, and one offsite, whether it be web-based or not. Um, and then just a real quick graph for, for people that are kind of new to disks. So hard disk drives on the left, they're super cheap. They're super big these days and they're super great. But obviously, you know, they don't quite give you the performance you'll need to play back big frames. So on one end is the hard disk drive, the spinning disks, and you can get enclosures for those. The, the Thunder Bay and the Pegasus are popular options. 45 to like the 65 terabyte range for Thunder Bays are great. And, um, you know, a little bit more for the Pegasus. Um, and then on the other end, the NVMEs on the right hand side, like those are great sweet spots to be in for your frame stores, for your caching. Um, the cost is going to get you. It's about 200 bucks a terabyte, including uh, drives and enclosure or PCIe cards or external enclosure if you're going that way. Um, so again, just a quick kind of, you know, whistle wetter. Uh, sorry. Um, no, I was, that makes sense. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Cool. Uh, and then bonus for anyone that can share with me in the chat, uh, a medium fast animal uh, to round out my chart here. Um, so the uh, the Promise Pegasus, look, it's super, super popular. I don't own one. Actually, I do. I own the internal, but not the one in this form factor. Um, it's a hardware RAID, which means you can plug it into any computer or dual boot, and it'll be recognized as a RAID volume. It offers a multitude of RAID types. If you don't know RAID, look into it and Google that. And look, you buy it, it shows up, it just works, right? And that's super, super helpful. Um, the cons, it comes with hard disk drives. It comes with spinning disks. They don't sell a chassis only version, which is the reason I chose not to buy one, but you can also get them secondhand and they hold their value really well. So that's an option. Um, they're expensive and uh, currently there's no encryption, which is not a big deal for 95% of the people out there, but some, for some people it is, it's worth knowing. Good to know. Uh, here's the Thunder Bay, and I've got a couple of these. Um, they ship with hard disk drives, or you can bring your own drives. You could fill it with SSDs, which I know is really common. You could buy two or three of the small ones, fill them with SSDs, and stripe all those three together to give you a super volume. There's so many great ways to kind of do that. Um, the cons are you got to bring your own disks, so you have to do research. Uh, there's no encryption, encryption, and the soft RAID that is a, a OWC product is slower than a hardware RAID, so it doesn't give you that max performance but the performance is still pretty good. I still get eight or 9,000 megabits a second. Um, I'm sorry, wrong. You still get a few hundred megabits a second filling one of these with four or five disks. Okay, for frame store, these NVMe raids are so where it's at right now for frame stores. Um, you can buy one of these, uh, these cards for three, 400 bucks. Sonnet makes one, OWC make one, but you gotta be careful. You definitely want PCIe, 3.0 with 16 lanes. Just know 16 lanes is your thing, not eight. 
Um, they are silent and cool. And via if you if you don't use any of their onboard RAID controllers and you just format it through Apple's disk utility, you can support encryption, which still gives you encrypted volumes that can play back four, five, six K, no, no sweat, which is super great. They are expensive and typically they're only RAID zero or one. Um, and for a cache disk, controversial maybe, but I think it's okay. Um, and I've been using it for six months. So um, your mileage may vary. So you have but yours set to, you, set, you, you have yours set to RAID zero. It's just, you're, yeah. they're all populated. It's just striped and you do disaster recovery clones or whatever to the, the, uh, the Thunder Bays. Is that what you do? Yeah, so everything exists on an internal Pegasus J4 that the, the it's a RAID 5. That's so many letters. Uh, <laughs> internal Pegasus, the thing that goes in the box. I got one of those. Um, everything that touches a job goes into that as like a project folder. That's my server. And then anything that comes into flame gets cached to an NVMe card like this. So, oh, okay. the, so the data is already in two spots. Right. And then every oh, that's night. interesting. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, so if this thing dies, I can still read no problem. I can still read 3K spec off of a RAID 5 volume in my machine. So anyway. That's so interesting because, you know, sometimes like the prevailing wisdom is like, I'm never going to cache anything to my frame store. But uh, that, that's true. In, that's true. But in doing so, you created a clone. You've created yet another like a redundant backup. True. And the only reason I do that is because I have a lot of clients last minute that need archives and I don't want to have to ship them entire project folders and structures. I just want to be able to ship them a flame archive with media baked in. So they don't have to relink and do all that stuff. So oh, brilliant. Okay. there's so many different ways to do it. I know some people out there right now are like, I never cash anything. Awesome. That works for you. It's not mm -hmm. how my business is rolling. Um, this is great though. I mean, you know, again, like uh, 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 it, 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 it's a workflow I never would have thought about unless, you know, I, I had heard about it from you. It's great. Yeah. And you know what, in hindsight, I may never even bought the Pegasus. I would have just gotten with two of these, one for uh, like, like near line of projects and one for a cache. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I don't think, I, no, anyway, hindsight, right? Um, 2020, man. Hindsight. Just like this year. <laughs> it's <Dumpster> bliss. <laughs> um, and then here's just a, a really crude uh, schematic of how my data exists. So the system disks, um, uh, are fair ter four terabytes and they get cloned every night to uh, a local disk. Um, and then those drip feed to Backblaze. And if you guys don't use Backblaze at home, like you just should, like thanks Renee and Zeke for, for sharing Black Backblaze with me. It's six terabytes per month per computer, unlimited storage, external hard drives are kosher. Oh, and sorry, just to create, it's not, you said six terabytes a month, you mean $6 a month. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes, six, yeah. yes. Yeah, Six unlimited uh, amount of, sta amount of uh, yeah. data, right? So yeah. super worth it, right? Totally. Um, I use it here. I love it. Super great. Uh, the project files, again, they hit this project Pegasus. Uh, the, the, the project files hit the 24 terabyte. They get cached to the frame store. And then every night they get double backed up locally to uh, the Thunder Base 6s. Um, mm -hmm. And then when a project and, kind of wrap, oh, go ahead. What are you using for the yellow drives for the, the system disk clone overnight? Is it just some... Yeah, so I bought Thunder Base sixes, and I'm only using five of the discs in that enclosure. Okay. In, in the stripe, in the RAID five stripe. So each of the Thunder Base sixes has six discs, but I'm only using a five of those discs to make the RAID five volume. And so each enclosure has this, like you know, I don't know, bastard disc. disc. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Extra disc. And so but it's, it's loved. It's, it's loved equally with oh, the for legitimate sure. discs. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's certified. It's ready to go. And if the world, if the, if the end of the world happens then I'll truck one of those out, swap it into the RAID five to rebuild if necessary. Mm -hmm. um, That's great to know though, man. I never thought about, about that with the, the, uh, with the Thunder Base. Cause yeah. I have one, I just have like a little shitty Western digital, like USB mm -hmm. powered, like mm -hmm. bus powered two terabyte drive. That is my yeah. system disc clone every night, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, super helpful. And yeah, then totally. Wasabi, um, Wasabi is my is my preferred cloud storage. It is uh, six dollars per terabyte per month. Um, and as soon as I have uh, a project that wraps, I compress the crap out of it and upload it to Wasabi for for all of eternity, or at least until I, I don't want to keep it, or I could potentially not earn any money from it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, oh yeah, Quinn, I'm right there, buddy. I'm right, right, right there with you. So don't forget. Uh, for hard drives, bigger hard drives are not necessarily better. 
There's a sweet spot with hard drives as far as RAID rebuilds and cost per terabyte. Make sure you do your homework. Um, prepare for RAID rebuild times. When a RAID isn't filled with all of its volumes, you gotta be careful. Soft RAID could take you two or three days to rebuild an eight terabyte drive. So two or three days, your data is inaccessible, yeah. No, it's accessible, but oh, at a reduced, super slow? could yeah. be super slow. And if you lose another disc, you're screwed. So you gotta be careful oh, for point. that. Okay. And um, to Quinn's point, keep, uh, you know, prepare for lengthy um, soft RAID certification times. Uh, a soft RAID, when you get a disc, you chuck it in, it wants to, it wants to tell you that the disc is good. And so it'll write um, data over the disc three times, read it back, make sure it's good and give you like it's certified, it's, it's, it's good to use. Um, you need two local copies on one off site minimum. I kind of like three because I'm learning my way and I'm making mistakes, but it gives me options. Do not deploy any of these systems without testing. Get it going, put some crap data on it you don't care about. Pull a drive, check the rebuild process because it will happen to you when the, the worst possible timing and you want to know how it works. Because disk failure is a when, not an if. It will happen to you, yep. absolutely. Um, and archive versus disaster recovery. So one of Andy's favorite discussion. One of my topics. favorite discussion topics. <laughs> For sure. And we're running a little low on time, so we won't go too deep into that. Um, but like Quinn just said, keep a, a budget for backup disks. Have it on your shelf. I've got mine right here. It's yep. been that is such a fantastic tip. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And no, like for me, I'm really lucky because Newegg warehouses are in Indiana and I'm in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So I get them within <laughs> 48 hours. But if you're not, please know like, you know, can you get this in? So that's an important thing to know. Um, just to give you guys some, some data, I create on average between one and five terabytes a month. So it gets to be a lot. Um, but at the end of that month, end of a project, I prune and get rid of all the crap I don't think I need. And I'm still averaging about a terabyte per month that, uh, that someone's paid for that I want to hold on to because that's a reputation for me and my business, if that makes sense. Totally. Okay. Compression. If you don't do anything, if you disregard everything else in this presentation, compress your flame archives when you're done with them. Um, it saves 40 to 80% of your flame archives. I'm not joking. This is not an exaggeration. I will show you how easy it is. Um, it doesn't take that much time. For about 100 gigs on, on, a, on a decent machine, it takes about an hour to compress, which ends up saving you bandwidth when you're sending it to clients or storage. It saves cash and it's say, and um, sorry, I screwed it up, but Kika is a, is a great free example of a software that'll do that for you. And here's example. So last night or, or a while back, I wrote an archive and on the left-hand side is just the original flame archive. It's at 117 gigs. Use Kika to compress it. An hour later, it's at 29 gigs. It's amazing. So I had no, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm downloading Kika right after this. I'd never, yeah. like, never heard of it before. Look into it. Um, <clears throat> internet stuff. Okay, just some quick internet stuff to look after. You gotta know your local ISP options. You have to know your bandwidth limits and your costs. For example, a slow month for me, I still use a terabyte of internet bandwidth. I've got three kids and red home, schooling, streaming, all that. When I'm busy, I'm using five or six terabytes a month. And my Xfinity ISP, guess what? Over one terabyte, they start charging me extra. And that's because you're on the unlimited plan, right? <laughs> yeah, hello. Uh, paying unlimited. Um, yes, <laughs> I don't have, I, I don't have gig up and down. I've got a thousand down and 40 up. So it's slow on up. It's still not amazing, but it's still better than some. Um, mm. And I make it work. But, um, you know, they will cap you, but I, I budget $200 per month plus taxes and fees for my internet, which is insane. But you just need to know, maybe you only pay 50 and you got gig up and down, you lucky bastards. But this is something you need to know about. And then measure it, use your, um, your iStat Pro to measure your bandwidth up and down and to see what, what's going on there. If you are not paying for a fast software like free retransfer, guess what? It's slow, but that's okay. You might use it for all the free stuff, the easy stuff, but just know that it's gonna be slow. Um, for love of God, know about the difference between megabits and megabytes and what, how that translates into your real world performance because you definitely need to know how long it takes you to upload and download a 10 gig file. You just need to, you need to have that knowledge because yep. it'll dictate everything. 
it's a totally underappreciated uh, bit of, of, of data for your running your business at home is the amount of yeah. time it takes. Yeah. But Renee touched on that last week too. It's so, so, so key. Yeah. It backs you into every delivery and every posting mm-hmm. and every time you share data for sure. And also look, if you're a, a PCOIP friend, then make sure you know your latency to local markets and it has no, no relevance of where you are geographically. It has everything to do with a bunch of stuff that you cannot control. So if you're not getting under 50, 60, 70 milliseconds, depending on who you ask and what flavor or what time of the year it is, then that could not be an option for you. And then for you also definitely need to know some VPN basics. All of my clients have them VPN into their places and you definitely need to have an understanding of how that works. They will help you set it up, but you still should know. Uh, basic home networking and routing, static IP addresses uh, for you will save the day when it comes to flame. So definitely look into that. 5G backup. This is one area that I wish I was, uh, was better at, but I don't have a backup and I, I def- desperately need internet backup. And then your typical workflow. Like if you're doing EXRs, home internet might not work for you. You might need to switch to ProRes Quad 4, something like that. Yep, definitely do a test because sending one ProRes file is a whole different experience than sending, you know, 300 totally. EXRs. It's a lot totally. of handshakes. Absolutely. And if you're sending flame archives, you need to test that crap because using FileZilla or FTP sites with ASCII versus binary transfers, it will totally bone you. No, don't know what's going on. It'll make you miss a deadline. So if that's a thing that you're involved with, do the research and figure it out and test. Quickly on some transfer things, um, you need a free slow way to transfer small files like we transfer free or Dropbox, Google Drive, scripts, emails, pre-pro books, all that stuff. That's really helpful. You also need a fast way to send project, uh, to present files to clients, Frame.io, WireDrive, Digital Pigeon. And I totally blanked on Ivar's system, but he'll share it with us in a second, I'm sure. I'm just not familiar with it. Um, Start at a clock. There you go. Um, and then you also need a fast way to share large files, either the pro version or the paid version of WeTransfer. Like Renee mentioned last week, uh, she and I are both fans of Massive, which is a pay per gigabyte download service. You can upload terabytes, no charge. You download terabytes, they charge it per the, per the gigabyte. Um, and it's really fast and it's scriptable and it's helpful and it integrates with a bunch of stuff like Slack and it's so worth it. Um, and then you need a, a fast way to back up your stuff, look into Wasabi or Backblaze to get you started. Um, and then just be careful and use iStat Pro, not affiliated, but make sure you're measuring because very few services of these will saturate or max out your bandwidth. Okay, power. Man, I didn't realize I yep. needed this until, until I did. Um, yep. The Sunday before I deliver personally my most important project in the history of my career, what is my neighbor doing? Maintenance on his whole home backup generator fries a circuit, brownouts around, and I'm running extension cords to my neighbor's house, three houses down to keep working. You don't think you're gonna need it, for the love of God, buy one. If it does nothing more than show you how expensive these rascals are to operate. Uh, Just chilling, my Mac Pro is a 400 watt average at idle. Bumps up to about a thousand watts. I pay 13 cents a kilowatt hour cost me 50 bucks a month minimum just to have the darn thing on, right? Mm -hmm. So it is absolutely a cost that you need to be aware of and look into. And it could dictate whether you buy an iMac Pro and have a laptop with direct storage to run your backup so that you don't have expensive machines pulling a thousand watts an hour when you can have your 80 watt MacBook Air upload some stuff to the cloud with a hard drive attached. It's definitely worth looking into. Battery backup helps. I like these, they come in three different flavors and costs. Honestly, I'd buy three. I'd have one for my computer, one for my monitor and speakers, and one for my internet. Um, And that'll give you approximately 20 minutes to 25 minutes to 180 minutes, respectively, when it comes to battery backup, which is totally worth Mm -hmm. it. And if you can, get a dedicated circuit. Can't tell you how many times my Mac shut down before I got these things when my wife was in the kitchen running the the, the kettle and uh, my kids are playing video games in the other room. And also heat. So I have a thermometer in my room. This room is 10 degrees warmer than any other room in my house because my darn Mac Pro. So just know that's a, it's a factor for you. 
It's totally a factor. I have, I deal with it here too. And I just have a laptop, two screens, external storage and me. So for monitors, I know we're running tight on time. Um, monitors are tough. It's hard to, to know what to buy because it's, they're expensive and you don't necessarily want to test a bunch of them. Um, you really can't go wrong if you ask around the forums and, uh, and, and logic. A lot of people love the BenQs, the HP, the Dell, and the ISOs. I recommend a 4K screen. And if you PC OIP, you should match resolutions for your host computer uh, mm -hmm. if, if at all possible. It'll save the day. Uh, I like wirecutter.com for 4K monitor reviews. They're really helpful. So check, uh, check those out. Um, real quick, I know we're running low on time, but client sessions are a big thing. Um, I don't offer much. I haven't been asked to offer much. My clients are stretched thin. And the last thing they want to do is spend, waste their, their, their Fridays staring at my face. So um, if so, I would just use Zoom or Evercast. Those are good options. Zoom obviously leaves a little bit to be desired with security, but there are other better options out there that are software-based, that are easy to get in and out of, that don't require a huge deal. Um, and honestly, Skype and Microsoft Teams and ScreenShare, Jitsi Meet, those are totally fine as well for non-critical color. The Blackmagic Web Presenter is totally great because it uses USB on board, which means that everything always thinks it's a webcam, but that's the bad thing because everyone always thinks it's a webcam and it's only 720p. Just know that this whole category is, uh, is just prepared to be disappointed because everyone's going through this. There's low stock, lots of limitations, expensive secondhand markets, and be careful for that. Other just miscellaneous stuff, um, look out for Mike's Backburner Guide. Do not install Flame until you've read it. I'll link to it in my document. It'll set up all of your networking and the host name so that you don't get burned once you long fl launch Flame and Backburner doesn't work. Definitely know about CSR Util, the system integrity protection that Catalina so eloquently offers. It's a pain in your butt and anytime you have problems installing anything, this is the culprit. Um, again, just turn off uh, OS and software updates. USB is probably the third most frustrating part of my world when it comes to like extension cables and all that jazz. Um, and then flame versions, just because you shouldn't doesn't mean you can't. And what I mean is have a few different versions of flame. I know everyone thinks that's naughty, but even just last week, I took on a job and build the day because I was willing to rebuild my machine for an older version of flame, take over someone's archive and deliver a job. So just know that it should be in your repertoire. You should have the capabilities to do that. Learn the install and uninstall procedures. Um, and I have three disk images ready to go of the three most common be used flame versions on, on my local machine ready to go. And then other little things that help team viewer, VNC and any desk, make sure you understand how to remote control on your computer. It means you can get away from your desk, it means you can go the heck outside and kick off downloads from somewhere else. If you like this stuff and you like more of it, check out Hugo's desk. Uh, six months ago, he did an amazing presentation that takes all this stuff and then like pluses it to 11 or 12 and walks through all the stuff he's built over the last five years. It's inspiring and scary, but definitely worth it. Um, and then finally, all the icons in this presentation were used on behalf of the Noun Project and thank you to these artists for allowing me to use those. And thank you. Dude, that was amazing. Amazing. Uh, there are a couple of questions in the uh, in the chat, and I have one from Facebook Live. Ooh. Let's see here. Uh, the first one from uh, the chat was Suzanne saying, uh, "What's your monthly cost approximately for all the tech?" Oh, if you don't mind sharing. Okay. You know what? I don't mind. Uh, hardware is about five hundred bucks a month for the loan. A license, if you do monthly, is five sixty something U.S. Um, other various bits and pieces, like for me, hundred percent of my internet counts, you know, 50% of my electric electricity counts, cell phone counts. If you put all that, you know, depending on what you want to include another, let's just say it's, you know, 1300 to 1800 all in a month, which for knuckleheads like us could be solved in, in two days of booking per month ish. Um, so yeah, something something like that. I can I have it all written out for accountants. So if you want more specs, like sit like grab me offline, but something like that. Totally. Uh, Theo from Facebook Live is asking, do you have any advice on remote setups? Not high resolution enough to see fine detail in the comps. 
all based on bandwidth, I assume. Are there any tricks to get a better preview? A better preview? Uh, I guess if you're having a low resolution, if you're having, it's, it really is kind of, you know, it's funny, it's all, I, I mean, we deal with it, even the PC over IP connection I have back to my office, it's yeah. all latency. You yeah. Know? And you, like you said, it's all out of your control. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's tough. I would say there's a few things you can control. Uh, and the things you can control are spending as much money you can on your internet, um, optimizing your router at home. For example, there are so many things on your router um, that you can do to improve performance. Like if you get anything from your ISP, look like just turn off all the crap. There's extra monitoring stuff. And that, that uh, increased my performance just through my router from 400 megabits to a gigabit through my router, not including up and down. Um, run ethernet cables, like, I'm sorry, just do it. Buy a 50 foot one. I know Andy, you got one, I got one. Run ethernet. And aside from that, that's, you know, unless there's specific use cases, um, that's about all I got for that. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe like uh, uh, my Wi-Fi base station or whatever is right below me, you yeah. know? And it's so it's like this much of a floor. Yeah. And I figured that was enough. And yeah. but when I plugged in that ethernet cable, it was like night and day. The yes. other thing that's been a gotcha sometimes is uh, the backups that I have going over Backblaze. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes what I need to do is schedule those so they're not yes. happening during uh, like peak time. That, that has yes. an impact too. And so you can see using iStat Pro what specific services are using your bandwidth. And there you can pause Backblaze and you can provide FileZilla or Massive or WeTransfer or Safari with the maximum stuff. And you would never know that if you weren't measuring it. So mm -hmm. measure it. And then sometimes there are things you can tweak to at least get you to where you should be, not where you are. Not where you are. Yeah. Another question from Facebook Live. I got Eddie uh, from Eddie Pinero. How would you operate an HPZ workstation by remote on a laptop at home? RGS. Yeah, totally so H RGS. So HP designed and ships for free with every HP machine uh, RGS. And I'm not an RGS expert. My experience at big studios has been with Teradici. Um, but RGS right now is by far the, you know, uh, it depends on who you ask. Let me say this. There are many people that do what we do that publicly love RGS very much. And RGS has been recently uh, um, helpful when it comes to solving stuff like 48K audio and monitoring audio. So RGS, it comes with every HP and it's free. So look into that. Mm -hmm. That's definitely something you need to have on your radar. Awesome. Does anybody have any other questions for Randy? All right. Well, thank you, man. Thank you so much. This was absolutely sure. awesome. Yeah, I, I hope I appreciate it. I, I kind of hope I got enough places with enough depth, but you can always reach out to me. Um, okay, don't tell anybody. I've got family visiting and they think this is going for another couple hours. So, uh, <laughs> Right. So if anyone wants to <laughs> yep, email fire me, away. Me, just fire away. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. Um, but you're, for real. Randy, you you're helping think, Randy as much as Randy is helping you. Yeah, exactly. And even if you just want to tell me I've got something between my teeth, that's appreciated. Um, but yeah, if you can <laughs> that reach also me. also means you've got a very low latency, good connection. See? Zoom is see? working. See, how, see what I did there? You did great. Um, but yeah, you can reach out to me on, um, on Logic or, um, or email me. Um, yeah, I'll help you out however I can. Um, so yeah, I appreciate the time, Andy. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Would you mind if, uh, if I publish the, um, the, uh, your Google slide presentation or if I shared the link yeah, to that? That's or... fine. Yeah. You can share. Okay, cool. Want. Yeah. Wonderful. So Kevin, I'll put that up with, uh, with the, when, when I post this episode on logic.tv. Yeah. Um, all right. Let me close this out then. Da, da, da. Thank you, Randy. So coming up on uh, Logic Live next week, and I'm going to put the links in chat. Next week, we're doing Using Flame with Shotgun. Uh, we've got Alan Letary and Jesse Morrow from Instinctual in LA who are going to show us how they use uh, Flame with Shotgun every day. And again, that was a, a recommendation from, uh, from, one of the, from someone on Logic that they'd like to know more about that subject. So please tune in. And I did just put the link to register in, um, in the chat. 
Uh, I'm going to be taking the week after that off. And then thank you to Maury Rosenfeld for the amazing suggestion of having like a little social hour. So on August 30th, we are going to do a Logic Live summer party, a virtual summer party, of course, uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, if you just go to logic.tv slash 2020 summer party, you can fill out the registration form. Uh, it's going to be on Zoom. I've got uh, a license of silhouette paint to give away from our friends at Boris FX. And it's really uh, going to be uh, just an opportunity for us to hang out, to socialize. Everybody will be able to turn their cameras on, uh, chat with each other. And really, you know, uh, it'll, it'll be a way to say thank you. At that point, it'll be six months of doing Logic Live. And uh, none of this would have been possible without all of you uh, being so supportive and tuning in and making recommendations. And so uh, definitely let's let's all have some fun. It's going to be bring your own, uh, bring your own drinks, uh, cocktails, of course. And I, I moved it back to 3 p.m. So at least it'll be noon on the West Coast here in America, which uh, at least is... Uh, kind of socially acceptable to start drinking, especially on a Sunday. Let's abruptly end that music. Uh, I'm in the middle of, of production on a big job right now, and so I didn't get a chance to post a Logic Podcast episode last week, but I will try to get to it this week. Uh, if you haven't subscribed uh, on either Apple Podcasts or Stitcher, please do. And of course, this episode and all of the past Logic Live episodes are available at logic.tv, as well as some other great Logic content. Uh, if you get a chance, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're up at over 500 so far, which is great. I'd love to get over 1,000. So uh, get your friends, get your neighbors to go ahead and subscribe. And thank you, of course, as always, to Sinus Associana Solutions Integration and Support for Digital Content Creators. Find out more about their remote workflow solutions at digital, I'm sorry, at uh, Sinesis.io. That's going to do it, everybody. Thank you very, very much, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>